back, everyone. I know that was a short break. Uh, we have just the afternoon to go, so um, let's get started. Neil Perry, you're already sitting down in those nice, comfy chairs to talk to us about Pop Tent, right? Actually, we're going to talk about uh, some challenges that marketers are faced with, and of course, Pop Tent will probably come into play in the conversation. Right. Well, good. Uh, well, welcome, and thank you. Big round of applause. You know, I should uh, preface this by saying, uh, I, originally I was uh, uh, solely a brand marketer for McDonald's Corporation. Uh, ten years ago, I concluded a 23-year uh, career with them in their marketing department. Uh, back then, the average cost of a 30-second commercial, the plug number that we used to uh, do our budgeting and do our planning, was $350,000. Each year, McDonald's produced about 150 commercials around the globe. So we were used to paying an awful lot of money for a creative, and that was 10 years ago that that was the price point. That was before tablets. That was before the prolifer pro proliferation sorry, of uh, all of the different channels, the television channels, the food channels, the travel channels, the uh, uh, do-it-yourself channels. Uh, that was also when all of us were using BlackBerry phones instead of real, true smartphones. So things have really changed a lot, and the challenge remains. There's always a demand for more creative material uh, and more videos to put on the air than budget will allow. So brand marketers are faced with a real challenge trying to come to terms with that and figure out what they can do uh, to take advantage of all of these new channels that are available to them and get the video they need. So we have uh, two great brands up to talk to us a little bit about their experiences. Uh, and some of the solutions that they've come out with. So Gretchen, why don't you introduce yourself and your company? Sure, I'm Gretchen Skalka. I'm the senior, senior manager for content and creative services for TBC Corporation, um, which we say is the biggest company you've never heard of. Uh, we own about 40 different tire and automotive services agencies, including Midas, Big O, Tire Kingdom. You may have heard of a few of them. So that's what I do. My job is to um, is basically oversee all of the direction that our content and all of our creative initiatives take in all forms of advertising. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kathy, you're next. In the back, if you could advance the slide, because I can't find the clicker. Hi, I'm Kathy McHugh, Senior, Mark, senior Media Manager at Stanley Black & Decker. Um, I, I predominantly work on uh, ways in which to get the video that I get produced into the hands of the consumer via different media efforts. So. Um, a lot of challenges from a budget perspective, from a resource perspective, and um, we've come up with some interesting solutions over the past couple of years to talk about. Kathy, I'd love you to, to tell the audience a little bit uh, more specifically some of the challenges that really face you as a, as a marketer, because it's not all money. It's not all a budget scenario. There are other challenges that you're faced with in trying to get creative on the air. Right. Um, well, one of our biggest challenges is not having an agency of record. Um, not that I'm looking for solicitations at the moment. <laughs> Um, but um, it, it's a money thing. Uh, it's also a, a person thing within in-house. In um, the media department is literally one person, me. Um, but we do have a, a whole brand marketing group behind me, and we all support each other. Um, but there's, there's time issues. There's cost issues. Um, there's just the, the issue of working with people who don't understand your product and getting uh, creative back that doesn't seem to make sense. So a couple of those challenges. Okay, thanks. If you could advance the slide, I just want to share a couple of stats. Um, this is one of the reasons this is critically important for, for these two ladies as marketers and for many of the marketers in the room. You know, 89 million people in the U.S. are going to watch 1.2 billion online videos today. 76% uh, of marketers are planning to add videos to their website. That's a, a repurposing of video that uh, didn't exist 10 years ago. 52% uh, of consumers say that watching product videos makes them more confident to buy online. And as two retail uh, brands uh, here up on the, on the stage, that is very, very important, obviously. Uh, the next slide is one that I found a little bit startling. Can you advance the slide, please? Thanks. Uh, this was from the Verizon CEO. He just announced that streaming video now accounts for 50% of their wireless network traffic. And he predicts it's going to be two-thirds. Uh, by 2017. Uh, so there's a lot of challenges. Uh, there are three basic areas where a lot of marketers are looking to find new ways in producing video. Uh, one is using crowdsourcing. We're going to give some examples and talk a little bit about that today. Uh, there is also batch shooting. 
uh, which is literally just doing multiple commercials on one day or two days in a, in a major shoot. And there's also bringing video production in-house. And we're going to talk about all three a little bit today. But first, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about crowdsourcing. Uh, Gretchen, I'm going to start with you. Could you talk a little bit about what the benefits are from your perspective on using crowdsourcing as a solution? Uh, there are several. Um, for one, it's a money saver for us. It's also a time saver for us. Um, it takes away a lot of the overhead and um, administrative work uh, that you have to do when you're um, shooting and you're casting and you're costuming and on all those related things. It also opens us up to other points of view that we wouldn't normally have. If I submit a creative brief to my team, I'll get some you know, input, but a lot of yes, yes, yes. Whereas if I open up a bid to a crowdsourced um, solution, I'll get myriad um, examples, offshoots of my brief that will take me in directions that I didn't even know we could go. So it's really opened up a new world of creative for, for us at DBC. Uh, you brought a piece of creative you wanted to share, but could you set it up for us a little bit? And I'd also like you to talk a little bit about the costs uh, as you're prefacing your remarks here. Sure, sure. This one is one of a, a set of four 30-second spots that we did under the premise of you work hard, so does your car, we can help. Uh, evergreen spots that can play across any of our many, many brands. Um, and this came about because in an uh, analysis of our current and recent past advertising, there's no actual human element in our advertising, and automotive services are very much like a dental visit. If you have to go, it's a bad thing, it's expensive, no one wants to do it. And so we're trying to um, you know, reinforce who we are as a company, what our values are, that our customers' values are our values. And this is a huge departure for our company, but we're very excited about it. And this, this spot is one that resonated so strongly with our company that it's allowed us to take our advertising in a completely new direction. So. All right, great. Can we uh, roll the uh, TBC spot, please? Sometimes a car is more than a car. Sometimes it's a clubhouse. Sometimes it's a spaceship. Sometimes it's a jungle gym. Sometimes it's my assistant. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. It can be an adventure just getting them buckled in. I rely on my car to protect everything I care about. It's good to know someone's got my back. That's one of four that cost us, I believe, about sixty to seventy thousand. Whereas we would have had one thirty second that would have cost eighty five that wouldn't have given us that that emotional lift. All right, great. Now you've also just made a decision to move a lot of your production in house. Could you talk just for a few minutes about that? Sure. We have just completed construction of our own in house studio. So it's a dual studio: photo on one end for strict product photography, and video on another end um, for also product. Um, testimonials, educational tutorials, and things like that. We will definitely be doing a lot of in-house video, but we'll also, I believe, continue to, to use a crowdsource solution because it's, in a very short amount of time, given us so much more to work with than we would have had in-house. Okay. So we'll be using both. We appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Kathy, let's turn to you a little bit. You've also done some production in-house, uh, but then you've also experimented with crowdsourcing. Uh, talk to me about how they both play into uh, each other as far as your production plans. Well, the in-house agency actually helps with um, maybe those not-so-key products that we need to support um, and or the ones that we need perhaps a little bit more time where it's more about the product and it's more of a, a sell, so maybe like the one-minute spot. So we've been able to do those in-house very efficiently uh, and actually pretty quickly. Um, and what we love about that is that we're talking to the person who literally sits upstairs from the product manager, so any questions, um, there's a constant connection, and they're also right next to the brand team. So the messaging is always consistent. There's no question as to um, what should we be saying, what's, what's the feature of the product, any of that stuff. So that's been great for that perspective. Um, it's somewhat limited. Um, when we're talking about putting something on TV or something um, digital, whether it's streaming or pre-roll, we want to have something maybe a little bit more polished. So we've gone with the crowdsource way, and um, we've been surprisingly surprised. Um, we've, we've loved what we've gotten from it. We've gotten so many different options that, um, just like Gretchen said, we never would have explored had we just followed a, or just completed a brief and given it to an agency, looked at storyboards, and then trusted in them to deliver what they say they're going to deliver. 
So when we see the 15 or so different spots that we get from the crowdsourcing, it's, it's like, wow, I had no idea that our brand was even thought of in that perspective, or wow, I never thought of that product being used for, for that particular application. So it's really opened up our eyes to other ways for the messenger or to message the consumer and, and also just to get the message out there. Okay, great. I'd love us to show that uh, next spot, which is the Black & Decker spot. Do you have any introductory comments about what we're going to see? Um, this, um, we love this spot. Um, this one, uh, we actually liked, a, we, we loved a few of them. So it was kind of hard for us to choose one. Um, but the one you see here is definitely the one we chose. There's, uh, it, it's a little bit challenging because it's a system message. And hopefully you get that from what our creator was able to accomplish. All right, can we roll the second spot, please? Brace yourselves for the Matrix Quick Connect system from Black & Decker. With a 20-volt max lithium-ion battery, this powerhouse is way more than just a drill. It's like having seven epic tools in one. Build your own collection for ease and versatility, and have so much high-performance power, your to-do list will beg for mercy. Boom. So stand up and start building your own Matrix Quick Connect system today. Not as soft as her spot, obviously. <laughs> well, you were busy selling, and that's perfectly yeah. acceptable. Uh, a great spot. Uh, what about length of time? For how long did the average assignment run for you? Oh, it was, it was great. I think this one was eight weeks, six to eight weeks from you know turning in the creative brief and and actually having fifteen different options to choose from. It was. Great. Okay, and you purchased uh, on average about two two videos per. We, we do. We uh, yeah. Okay. We do. I wanted to talk a, a little bit about the uh, third option, which is batch shooting, that uh, I, I think is becoming very prevalent. Uh, I'd love to say we created this idea. It's an agency idea that uh, is really uh, uh, prospered right now, and all it is is scheduling commercial shoots together. So doing two, three, or four commercials over a three to five day time period to amortize costs. Uh, to allow for the production to, uh, uh, to unfold, and then they spend their time on editing each of the four spots later on. It's a very cost-efficient way of uh, sharing talent, uh, sharing production teams, and lowering costs. So really, those are the three ways. I think you've done, in your past, uh, done some batch shooting. Um, uh, Kathy, any, any comments on how that worked for you? It, it actually is a very efficient way of doing things, um, and it's especially when you're, you're the one traveling to the shoot. So if we couldn't get five, six in, a, at our, in our heyday, we did about eight to ten spots at once. So traveling in one fell swoop for, say, a week and a half up to Los Angeles was fantastic, and we got some great savings. But we're no longer in that uh, mindset where we have that many products or the money to produce that many spots. So we really needed to come up with an alternative um, to get quality spots that we wanted to share with the consumer. So we've had to look at alternatives. Yeah, PopTet worked with uh, Dannon and their agency YNR to produce two commercials on one day on a shoot on the West Coast for Dannon. And it was for Dannon Oikos Yogurt. Uh, it featured John Stamos. Uh, and the interesting part about that was not only were we able to get two commercials out of it, we also got B-roll footage out of that day. Uh, we also got a couple of 10-second teaser and an internal video that they used in their corporation to talk about their plans. Uh, and the best news for us is one of the spots that was produced that day actually was a top 10 rated Super Bowl commercial. Uh, so uh, those are three ways that we've uncovered that uh, marketers are saving money right now. Uh, crowdsourcing, which is a pop tent specialty, uh, batch shooting, which I think is an agency-driven effort, but we also have a hand in that, and then taking things in-house. And I think all three have allowed marketers to uh, uh, come up with ways, uh, creative ways of getting all the video they need. Uh, ladies, uh, to, uh, a couple of closing comments. Uh, if you were a queen, uh, where, where else would you be using video, and how do you see it playing into your marketing plans if, mar if money was not the object? at all. Let's start with you, Steve. I would actually use it extensively. I would use it across all channels. I mean, video for us is something that, you know, it, it's easily engaged with, and our customers can do that anywhere. They can do it actually in the shop, so we can continue to message them and talk to them and have that, that conversation with them while we're working with them on their car, while we're servicing them. We can give them continuous messaging. We can also do that through electronic stanchion signs in store, POP, things like that. So. I would use video very, very liberally everywhere. There's almost nowhere I wouldn't use it. 
Okay, thanks, Gretchen. Uh, on your end? Um, ditto, really. Um, we have the, the issue of all of our retailers have a lot of different products of ours, and uh, the sales person in that aisle may not know exactly what this drill is versus another drill, so it would be great if we had a kiosk at every store, essentially, that can help them, the consumer, with their purchase yeah. decision to help really identify this drill and this feature versus this drill and that feature. So from that perspective, um, and then we would also, we would probably have a video for every single one of our products. Yep. We put it online because we know, you know, generally people would rather look at a video than read a stack of bullets. And Absolutely. it's just, it's that much easier. And if you make it more relevant to them, it's, it's again, it's like a no brainer. Okay. We have a few seconds left. We could probably take one question and then I promised Josh I would get off the stage. So uh, is there one quick question? Anyone want to know anything? Sourcing mean. Um, there you go. Have you had any creative briefs or, or projects focused on creating lots of uh, bite-sized video for Vine or for for social media to say I would like 20 um, six-second pieces, anything like that? You know, we're uh, we're talking to a number of clients now on that six-second link, which seems to be the magic link, apparently, according to uh, uh, the, the Twitter and. and uh, we are looking at that and going out to produce some of those. Right now, we're still in discussion stages with a couple of clients. Um, you know, it's very hard as a marketer, just putting on my marketer hat, uh, it's incredibly difficult to do a very good 15-second piece of creative. When you're getting down to six seconds, that scares me a little bit. Uh, uh, I really wonder how effective we actually could be. I'd love to have Ace Metrics do a, a quick evaluation of whether or not you can deliver with a, a six-second message. Uh, but right now, we haven't produced any. Uh, but we are certainly in talks with at least five different clients right now who are looking to do it. Ladies, are you looking for any uh, six-second spots? We've actually spoken about doing that, having a library of, of go-to short pieces that we can then splice in with other video um, and have basically a catalog of short pieces we can intercut with other video to speak to different products and how they might work for different driving styles, different um, driving needs. So, okay, yeah. great. And not yet, but I'm sure we will. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's give them a nice round of applause, Gretchen and Kathy, for coming on stage. Thank you, ladies. All right, back to you. Great, thank you. Uh